is Copilot 365 better than ChatGPT? Well, in this video, we're going to take a look at Copilot 365 and how it might actually be a better choice depending on the environment you're working in and what you're trying to accomplish with AI. You know, I've been working in the field a long time, technology and now AI, and one of the things that I'm seeing is a repetition of a common mistake that is done when a new technology starts to be introduced into an environment. And that is, a lot of times people are trying to use the technology with a developer mindset or with a construction mindset from the bottom up. What I mean by this is we have these large companies that are making LLMs, companies like OpenAI, Google, lots of different companies. And these large language models are trained on public data. So we have all this public data, the internet and such, and that's used to train the LLM, which is trying to satiate you by giving you answers and organization of what you'd like through your prompt. That's great. That has a lot of value. There's, there's really nothing wrong with that, and it has a lot of things that we can do with it. We generally don't interact with the large language models directly unless we're developers and, and using an API. We normally use a tool like ChatGPT and all of the other generative AI tools that you might have out there, things like Gemini or Perplexity. There's a lot of different ones out there. Now, when it comes to using these tools, what we have to remember is that they are actually being trained on or they're using this LLM, which is using this public data, which is providing the answers to the prompts that we put in. Now we can modify these for sure. We can do things like create agents in there. We can actually have data connectors where we connect them into our data, our personal private data, our business data, whatever the case may be. But ultimately, we're dealing with a tool that is both training or grabbing data from and training to public data sets, which actually also can raise concerns around data privacy and such. Now we can get special versions of ChatGPT that don't go back and we can set settings and that's, that's a video for another time. But when we deal with something like Copilot, what we're doing with Copilot is we're taking our data. So when we have something like Microsoft Copilot 365, this is integrated to our data sets. So our organizational data. This means that if we're using the productivity suite, we're using things like Office, uh, Word, we're using things like Excel, we have our own uh, private storage where we have our OneDrive, we have things like Microsoft Teams sites or SharePoint sites. Teams is really just a, a superset of SharePoint. So we have all of this Microsoft data that we're using because we might be a Microsoft productivity environment. We use, we use Microsoft tools in order to accomplish our day-to-day -day tasks. Well, what we can do is now we can have our co-pilot use our data and our organizational data in a secure manner by using role-based authentication. So we use role-based access control, which means that if you have permissions to a Microsoft Teams site, you can only grab the data that you have permission to see. Your OneDrive would be the same thing, either your personal OneDrive or a shared OneDrive. Same for Excel, same for Word. Now we can also go in with Copilot and we can connect that down into public data sets because guess what? Copilot actually uses ChatGPT or can use ChatGPT as one of its data sources. But the main thing that we want to do is we want to use our internal data sources because a lot of times what I'm trying to do with AI is not look at the public world and say to myself, you know, I want to organize public data. I want to organize my data. 
I want to do analysis of my Excel spreadsheets. I want to do uh, writing in using my Word documents, using my Outlook contacts. And Outlook is another great one that we can connect up. Um, I want to grab files from my OneDrive and look for patterns. I want to look at the meetings and the, the information that I have on my Teams and my SharePoint. Let's take a look at Copilot and see just how different it is, but how powerful it is when it comes to using my data and my environment and still allowing me to access the public data when I'd like to. To access Copilot on the web, if you go to Microsoft365.com, it used to be Office 365 and before that it was Office, and we can just go into the URL, it'll resolve for us. We can go into our account and we can modify a few things. I usually like to download the desktop or the mobile app, but I can go into settings and I can do things like change privacy. If I go into privacy settings, this will take me to my computer privacy, so I won't show you those, but I can make modifications there. I can go into general, you know, dark theme or light theme or let the system decide. So we have a lot of options here. And you can see I have a chat window. Up at the top corner here, if I go in, I can look at my recent pages. I can get to settings here as well. And I can enable or disable the web search. I can even try ChatGPT. We'll talk about that in a moment. And one of the things is because I'm in an organization, you'll notice that up top here, I have this little green shield. And that means that I have enterprise data protection turned on. This is using role-based authentication. I can also launch a temporary chat if I'd like, if I don't want to save my chat. Now, I can use my work resources or I can browse the web. So you can see I can use work or web resources in order to have the AI um, work with work or web resources. I can even turn ChatGPT on. So I can make Copilot act just like ChatGPT. I'm going to download the application, the desktop application, and you can also download the mobile app for your mobile device. Once you download the desktop application, you'll just download it and install it like any other application. You'll want to be logged in with the, your work account if the work is providing um, the Copilot 365 or whichever account your subscription's on. So notice I have a couple of things. Because I'm in an educational tenant, I have a little teach option here. And I can do all sorts of interesting teaching tools like curriculum planning, lesson planning, and there are more coming soon, which I'm looking forward to. There's a number of resources for educators that I can go through and learn more about how Copilot AI can help me as an instructor, as a teacher. There's lots of things that I can do. And I can go in and set up my own flashcards, lesson plans, rubrics, all sorts of teaching tools. That's just one example of some of the things that I can do with Copilot 365. Now I can also go into the create mode. <clears throat> create mode is one of my favorite modes in Copilot 365 because it really makes creating different types of assets very easy. So I can go in, for example, and I could say I want to uh, create educational resources. I can see all sorts of different things that could help me when I'm teaching. I can go in and I can just select these templates and then use Copilot AI to build off of these. You can see that if I go into things like flyers, I have flyers that I can use for school, but I have things like budgets. So it's really comprehensive in terms of the types of things that I can create. And what I like about this is that I can go in and really use this as a tool set that allows me to get work done. Everything's built. I'm actually using this. AI-powered notebooks. I, I'll do another video on AI-powered notebooks, but this is great to gather content and get um, assets and such. The real power is when I go into apps, Copilot 365 is integrated with all of my office apps as well as apps that are part of my organization. So I can go through and find apps multiple ways. If you look at something like a Gemini, they have very few integrations. Uh, ChatGPT is having more all the time, <clears throat> but Copilot has a ton of them. So you can see here, I can go into things like my staff resources. I blurred these out because these are actually resources unique to my organization, which is very cool that I can access them right here from Copilot 365. I can even launch ChatGPT if you see it, saw that icon there as well. There's departmental applications, Microsoft applications, and you get all the applications here. 
One of my favorite, of course, is Microsoft Whiteboard, but you have Teams and you have SharePoint and you have all of the different Microsoft applications that you can use Copilot 365 with. One of the things that's interesting, and I just go back to chat, is that it will actually pick up on the things that I was doing. So let's go into Agents. Agents is a very powerful way of working with Copilot because it actually has a number of pre-built agents that allow me to do things like research, analysis, um, there's a learning co coach, there's all sorts of different types of agents that I can use. It depends on my subscription, but the, the different uh, agents that are built here for me in advance are very useful to work with. One of the ones that I really like, if I go down here, is I can create my own, we'll look at that in a second, but I can go in and I can actually have Copilot 365 help me with prompt agent. So I could add the prompt coach uh, um, agent into Copilot. You just add them in. And then when I have this prompt coach, it's going to allow me to go in, start doing prompt engineering, but guided prompt engineering. And there's a lot of different options here. I'm just going to keep it simple and show me three good prompts. You can see that Copilot 365 is guiding me through the process of using AI. And this is where I think Copilot 365 <clears throat> really is built for purpose. I'm not having to go from scratch. You can see that I have all my conversations in here. I can even create my own agent. So if I want to go in and create a custom agent, which incidentally, I can then share with other people in my organization. So I'll go in here and there's all sorts of pre-built templates that I can use as a starting point. So let's say, for example, I want to create an agent and there's a specific focus of this agent. So I could say, for example, the focus of the agent I want to create is a writing agent. So I get some description of the template, different type of effectiveness that I want to do here. For example, if I want to learn to write instructions, this is going to be an agent that helps me with that. I can select that. I can go through and configure the agent. So when I configure the agent, I can give it a name. I can go in, it tells me the instructions it's going to put in. I can also switch it. So I'm going to go in and let's make this something where I'm going to create an agent that's going to help me write effective responses to uh, questions that I get on course requirements. Now it's a little bit too long, so I'll just make it course rex. So I'll abbreviate that. And then you can go in, I can provide a description for the agent. I can set this, the different prompt or the, what I'm trying to do with the agent. This is very powerful. I can add my own knowledge base, my own documents, my own team sites. I can even have it so I can generate images with this agent. So you can see that I'm adding my own content that this agent will then use as part of its process. So let's say, for example, I had a whole bunch of documents on how to respond to student requests. I could put all of those in there. Now that you've seen Copilot 365 in action, you can see that it's a tool that leverages AI to help you be more productive doing the things you're already doing. So, if, well, if you're a Microsoft shop, obviously if you're using other tools, then Copilot 365 isn't going to be the solution. But if you're a Microsoft shop where you're using Microsoft Suite for productivity, which makes up a huge amount of businesses and individuals, then you can see that Copilot 365 uses your data and helps you do the things you'd like to do more effectively. And I think that's a key differentiator between it and other tools that are more just AI tools that you have to figure out what you want to do with them. And I'm not, you know, I've definitely used ChatGPT and Gemini and Perplexity. They're great tools for what they are. They're development tools. It's very similar to actually when the internet first came out and web browsing first came out. Everybody rushed out to learn how to code in HTML. Everybody wanted to use HTML in order to create websites and they felt if they could learn HTML, they'd know what the internet was all about. And now we see that many people have no idea how to build a web page, have no idea how to code, but they can still use the internet to do their job or use applications to do their job. I really do believe that that's the future of AI as a tool that's built in to the tools that we actually use. So we'll have AI built into our accounting tool. We'll have AI built into our productivity tool as you saw in this video. 
I'd really be interested to know what you think and whether you think you'd use Copilot 365 over ChatGPT for most of the work that you're doing. Now, of course, you can use both, and you even saw that within Copilot 365, you can use ChatGPT. So, in fact, Copilot 365 is like ChatGPT++. So, I'm very interested in your thoughts. Do you think Copilot 365 is something that you'll use? Comment down below, like the video if it was useful, and let's have a conversation. You can also check out my school community, that's S-K-O-O-L community, on how we can use technology to learn and teach and be more effective. Right now, a lot of that involves AI. So we'll see you over at the school community. Hope to see your comments down below and hope to see you in the next video.